welcome to Perfectly Load Balances All Requests Should Be Lightning Talk. My name is Christine. I'm joined with my colleague here, Nim. We're both DPEs at Google Cloud, where we focus primarily on Kubernetes and service meshes. So without further ado, we'll jump right into this beginner's presentation. What is load balancing? To simply put it, it is a way to distribute incoming network traffic across to your backend services. So here's a simple example of why this might even need to be in the first place. Let's say you have one user interacting with your containerized app, Foo. Everything should be working fine. But what happens if you have two, three, maybe a thousand more users interacting with your single pod of Foo? Now this pod might not be able to handle the increase in requests coming in. So your first instinct is to scale up. So let's say your deployment now contains three pods of Foo. Now that's great and everything, and you think you might have solved your problem, but we kind of introduced a new problem to replace that. How do we know which request should go to which service? This is where load balancing comes in. So Istio can help you navigate this tricky world of load balancing. So out of the box, Istio provides round robin load balancing, and that's what you probably tried out when you initially first started with Istio. So let's say you have a cluster called my cluster and you have three pods of the foo service and then one pod of your front end service. In this situation, the client side envoy proxy, i.e. the front end, will choose a foo instance and in a rotational like manner, will send the next request to the next foo instance. So you can see it will just go like that and repeat for each instance. So load balancing with Istio out of the box is quite nice. You get the round robin for default behavior. Uh, you also get a random uh, behavior as well. And then you also have a least request behavior. So random is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, requests are forwarded at random to instances in the pool. And then for the least request, a client side envoy will choose two instances at random. And then it will forward the requests to the instance with the fewest number of active requests live. So it will ensure a normalized behavior across this load balancing. So destination rules are how you specify load balancing within Istio. And if you don't know what a destination rule is, it's a way to group a service into subsets and lets you define policies to apply traffic to that specific service. So using this, you have the ability to really get nitty gritty and specify how you want load balancing to occur. So if you look on the right here, you got a destination rule YAML for book info, which is kind of like the hello world of Istio, where you can see you have a round robin just being specified for your load balancing. Now you can take it a little bit step further. So let's say you have very subsets specified. You can also specify within each subset what kind of load balancing policy you want applied to it. So that's really powerful behavior. Let's scale up a little bit. So let's say your app is really popular and you decided to scale up and deploy clusters across to the US West, US East, and EU Northeast. So you're really going global. So to ensure high availability, you decide to have Foo service and the front end service deployed to each of your clusters. Cool. Istio can help you manage regional traffic. So let's say you have some user in San Francisco who wants to use your app. Their traffic will get navigated towards US West because that is the closest cluster to them. So they interact with front end, which then sends the request over to Foo service. That's great. Istio can also help you mitigate problems. So let's say your Foo service in US West goes out. Now your traffic will navigate towards US East, which is the next closest Foo service. And that's a really powerful behavior that lets Istio mitigate that failure for you without showing to the user on the front end why if there is a failure in the first place. This is called locality failover load balancing. But wait, there's more. Let's say we have the same scenario where your San Francisco user is trying to interact with your app and for some reason Foo service in US West is still down, traffic gets directed to US East, but for some reason let's say that service also goes down. So that traffic will then, you can also specify that traffic to go to EU Northeast, which is really great because that is really flexible in allowing the failover to occur into different clusters. That's really powerful. You can also specify within Istio and the destination rule, how you distribute traffic across localities by specifying a percentage. So you can say, hey, I want 70% of my traffic to go to the US East cluster and then 30% of my traffic to go to the EU Northeast uh, cluster as well. 
So this is just a simple demonstration of how powerful Istio can be for load balancing and how you can use it to help mitigate scenarios. Now I'm going to hand it off to Nim, who's going to talk you through more multi-cluster deployments and also run you through a demo. Thanks, Christine. Well, let's move on to the demo, which Christine has set up for us. It's going to use Online Boutique, which is a pretty popular app that Christine and I work on. And some of you might already be familiar with it, but it essentially consists of about 11 different microservices. And for this demo, I've gone ahead and deployed each of these microservices into three different clusters. So there's a cluster in US West, cluster in US East, and a cluster in Northern Europe clusters. So let's see what that looks like in Kiali. So here's the Kiali graph, and each rectangle here represents a cluster. The one on the top right here, I think, is yeah, it's the US West cluster. It's got uh, an instance of each service. Um, and you also see that there's a front end service in each, each of them. And that's what we're going to be focusing on for this demo. Um, so let's take a look at the YAML that we're actually going to be playing around with. So it's this bit here. This is configuring a destination pool. And essentially, it's saying uh, if we start to see failures in the front end service of US East, then start using the front end service in US West. But of course, there's a lot of other noise in here. So like there's this connection pool bit where um, forcing each request to create its own TCP connection. And of course, this is just for demo purposes. And I'm also defining uh, the outlier detection, which is basically just telling Istio when an endpoint should be considered unhealthy. OK, so let's uh, now go ahead and try this thing out. I'm going to open up my shell here. And you'll see that if I look at my Kubernetes context, you'll see that I have the East cluster set as my context. And what I'm going to do is show you that I also have two files, uh, one containing the YAML that we just looked at. So let's just look at that again. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this YAML to my front end service. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so yeah, my front end service lives in a, a namespace called Online Boutique. And I've chosen the East cluster as the context here. And then, of course, I am applying the file that oh, I just catted. So let's wait a bit. Now, if I go back into our instance of Online Boutique, which is uh, the site here, and I refresh, you'll see that it's still um, using the US East as the front end. Um, but that's because we haven't taken it down. But now let's go ahead and scale down our front end deployment in the US East cluster. So that's what I'm doing here. I set scale it down to zero replicas. And so now if I go back into online boutique, and refresh this, um, you'll see that this was actually served by the US West cluster. Now let's take a look at the next YAML file that we're going to be working with, which is essentially going to be a weighted version of what we just did, but it's going to use a Northern European cluster as well. And here we're just saying, uh, let's put 70% of uh, the traffic into the West cluster and put 30 into the European North cluster when the US East cluster goes down. So let's go back into my shell here and I'll show you again that file. We can see the weighted stuff here and I'm going to now apply this file. It's been applied. Let's go back to Online Boutique, refresh the page. And you're, you're going to see it's been handled by the West cluster. So let me zoom in a bit more. And there you go. You got one that, uh, response that was handled by the North, so the Europe North cluster. If I refresh again, it'll likely be the West because we we're getting seventy percent in the West. Yeah, and that's uh, essentially the demo. Thanks so much for tuning in to Christine and my talk. Um, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us on Twitter. 
And yeah, that's it. Thank you.